Uh, hi everyone in this short video i will explain you how to use the limit operator so basically it, it, it will have three inputs and one output the inputs are the minimum value maximum value for the input and the input itself and the output is the output variable so if the input variable is between minimum and maximum the output will be equal to input if the input is smaller than minimum value the output will be min and if the input is bigger than the max value the output will be max so it's just basically a limit that you have so you limit the input variable and then uh, get the output variable as the input variable if the input is within the specified limits here in the help of the online help of the cuts you can see how to use it in the instruction list so loading a variable and then putting it into the limit and then setting the output variable or how to use it in the structured text st output variable where one is set by the output of the limit for the, the this is the minimum value this is the maximum value and this is the the input variable so the output for this one where one will be set as 80 because 90 is bigger than 80 However, here in this video, I will show you how to use it in the CS environment. I already have created an empty project, set the programming language to CFC, and declared the variables. I have the input variable, it, the type is real. I have output variable, minimum input, and minimum or and maximum input. To uh, insert the limit operator, I can insert the box. And then you, I need to determine the type of the box. Here you can find uh, the limit referring to the keywords, I think. So if I press the, yeah, it's here. By double clicking on it, it will appear here, limit. And since it's an operator, but not a fun function block, we don't need to declare this instance. As you can see here, it has three inputs and one output. So I need to insert three input elements and one output element here. Connect them to the inputs and outputs of the limit operator. The first one is the in min, the minimum value for the input. The third input is the in max, the maximum value for the input and the one in between the second one is the input variable and the output is the output variable obviously okay so i think that's all now since we are in the simulation mode we can just log in to run the code so initially all the variables have zero uh, by default i will put some uh, other values here for the minimum input I set it to 15 for the maximum value I set it to 50 and then for the input variable initially I put it to 25 pressing F7 and then Alt F7 we will have uh, the values in place and then if I run it we can see that since the input variable 25 is within the limits, within the minimum and maximum value of the input, which is 15 and 50, the output variable is the same as the input variable. Now, if I change the input variable to something uh, smaller than the minimum value, like 10, what I expect is to have the minimum value at the output, which is 50. And that's the case in it. The output variable has become 50. If I set it to some value bigger than the maximum value for the input 70 i expect to have 50 at the output variable again pressing f7 and the alt f7 what we have in the output variable is 50. okay so it's that simple you just need to provide the the lower limit and upper limit for the input variable and then the input variable itself and then the output variable will be equal to the input variable if the input variable is within the limits or it will be equal to the upper limit or lower limit for the input variable if the input variable is 
bigger than the upper limit or if it's smaller than the lower limit. So this is how to use it in the CFC environment. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it will be similar in the function block diagram, the FPD programming environment as well. And you already have seen how to use it in the instruction list and in the structured text environments uh, from the online data. Uh, okay, so I think that's all for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.